in this mess, and the source of the mess we understand, the source of the mess is that people who tried to enslave African people understood that they would have to try to stop us first from getting any kind of education, and then to stop us from getting a cultural education, to prevent parents from passing on the tradition to their children, to prevent African teachers from teaching the curriculum of the African continent. We understood that at one time. That's what we taught when we first came here. We called ourselves Africans all the way up until the 1900s in this country. That's what we were in the 1800s. I don't know how we got to be Negroes. <laughs> and then colors. I, I would like to know where the meeting was, where people voted on this. Because we were Africans in the 1800s. We established the African Lodge, all you Masons. That's the name of your lodge, Prince Hall. We established the African Methodist churches, all you church people. We established the African Free School, all you school teachers. That's what we did in the 1800s. And by the 1900s, we became Negroes. Who made us Negroes? I decided that since there were no, I've been to Africa many years now. I don't know how many times I've been to Africa, at least 100 times. And I've been looking all over Africa for Negroes. <laughs> and in the 30 years that I've been going to Africa, I have never seen any Negroes. I guess Negroes must have been made in Europe. <laughs> Negroes must be European. Because <laughs> they're not, I saw Ebos. I saw Hausa, I saw Kikuyu, I saw Zulus, I saw all kinds of people in Africa, but no Negroes. No Negroes. Negroes are a 19th century phenomenon because somebody wanted to take a magnet and destroy the files on the computer because by destroying the files on the computer, see, Computers that have the same program can talk to each other. <laughs> they can share files. <laughs> We're in a mess today, and the mess is getting stronger. The leaders are being purged in the African community not just the ones in political leadership. You know, overnight, the snap of a finger, no more Arsenio Hall. He was a nice guy, too. <laughs> He's trying to be nice to everybody. Overnight, snap of a finger. That's how much people respect the African audience. Media madness, that's how much they respect us. You make movies, I just saw a movie on Africa where they had people boiling white folk in big pots, almost as big as this auditorium with vegetables and stuff like that. <laughs> this was just made in the 1980s. I saw a movie called Out of Africa, which in the 1980s is nothing more than Gone with the Wind set in Africa. Nobody respects Africans. Gone with the Wind is now being restored and refurbished and extended in 1990s. That ought to make us happy. <laughs> you have to go back and fetch the memory to be able to interpret what's happening to us right now. You have to understand that 100 years ago we were in the same place that we're in right now. The same thing was happening to the African community a hundred years ago that's happening now. The Supreme Court started playing tricks on us a hundred years ago and took the little freedom that we had then just like it's happening now. We had politicians sitting in the legislature then and they are removed from the legislature then just like they're getting removed now. If you think I'm kidding, all those districts that were drawn to protect black voting rights are getting ready to be eliminated 
by a new decision of the court. We're getting ready to lose some in Atlanta. We're getting ready to lose the uh, so-called minority districts. You watch what happens in the next few weeks with the kind of court. We thought that we had made progress that couldn't be erased. They thought it then and we think it now. The media madness continues in 1994, crime and violence. So much so that the word crime, violence, and welfare is a substitute word for black. Everybody knows it. There were surveys done in November on why six million white males switch parties from the Democrats to the Republican. And many of them, when they came out of those voting booths, said, because I'm against crime and I'm against welfare. And they said, what do you mean? And when they finished, they were very clear who they thought was on the criminals and who they thought was on welfare. So that that's a substitute word for black. And you can't turn on a television station right now in 1994 because we are so disrespected. And because we have presented in the media those Africans who have confused identities. They don't know who they are. And the, the less they know who they are, the more popular they are in the media. This is the year that Sankofa, the movie, was made. Haile Garima, a professor of theater, of uh, filmmaking at Howard University, made Sankofa. He had some interesting experiences, just to try to make this point about the media mess a little more clearly, because it's a multifaceted problem. Here is an African from Ethiopia who has lived in the United States long enough to understand this thing, wants to make a movie portraying what he now understands. The first problem that he had was going to Ghana, trying to get in Ghana to use a slave castle to make his movie. And they opened up Ghana until white folk told Ghana to close it down. And then they said, well, no, you can't make your movie over here. Happily, there was one Ghanaian minister of information that understood what he was trying to do and pulled some strings and he got a chance to make Sankofa in a slave castle in Ghana. Think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment. People were asking questions like, Why, who is he to come here and make these kind of movies? People come from Europe, make movies all the time, never have any problem. But when an African came home to tell the truth, think about that for a moment. Then he came here to show his movie that he made, and nobody would distribute the movie. He couldn't get it in any of the commercial movie houses. Think about it now. We can get almost any kind of ignorant image on television you want. But no Sankofa. Why? Because they don't want Africans going back. Because what we've seen recently is a policy of ethnic cleansing. A policy that says we will do everything in our power to keep you from getting your lost files back again. We will disrespect your scholars. We will hide the scholarship. We will mobilize a propaganda campaign to spread lies and distortion to keep you from getting your files back again. Because they know that if you get your files back again, they know what happened before when you got your files back. You know, we've had this, we've had this little scene played out once before. Once before. In the early 1900s, we got our files back. A little short Jamaican came over here. And he told people that Africa had a history, 